I think I've got it pretty. It's not something that you download. Whenever I do the battle, whenever I start it, you'll just click a link that's in chat as long as you're on desktop, and it'll bring you right to the page. It does take a while to load, but it's free to play, and it's browser-based, so it's neat. Sadly, there's no mobile support unless you have a Flash browser. Like, uh, I think Puffin is a Flash browser. Brave. All of those are mobile apps with Flash support. They sent me an offer, it was from people that, like, um, worked with me. It wasn't actually Raid themselves. So whenever I actually went to the website to sign up for it, Raid was like, yeah, your content doesn't really meet our standards. I'm guessing they're wanting more, like, refined, edited videos for commentary is the main basis, which makes sense. Like, my type of content doesn't really make sense for sponsorships. I would have done something different, but I really didn't get the chance to explain that. I'm glad Escalate B taught me how to hit that properly. It really isn't, it's just a lot of money. I will gladly filter every dumbass 11 year old in my comment section that says, I are selling out! Because they live with their fucking parents and don't pay any bills. Once their only income is based on an inaccurate algorithm which doesn't ever give you any sort of consistency, then maybe they might be a little bit more understanding that people want to take consistent routes to getting their income sorted. That's just one thing, though. YouTube comments are a whole nother beast. Oh my gosh, wow. Alright. That's a cute little FC. Please don't fail this drum bar. First run past Robic FC. Not bad.
did it, guys. I did the quirky. That means I only have one relevant Exile Lord FC that's feasibly possible to go for in the near future. And I think everyone at home knows what that one is. G Fuel, if you're watching this video, uh, I want my discount code to be closer by Lakuta Coil. Let's do it. Let's do the tutorial. Okay. So, Epidox, robotic buildup. Yes, it is just as terrifying as it looks, because this section is absolutely disgusting. So, what this section is comprised of, uh, basically, is three cycles of the same type of pattern. You got two things here that are fine, and then these weird little blob deals, right? And then two more, and it repeats. And then on the third one, it's a little bit different because the chords are weird. Also, the entire section has accelerating BPM until the very last cycle, because at the very last cycle, the last four notes slow down, which is why Alec got a 100% overstrum the first time he tried to FC the section. So, how do you hit this section? Well, okay. This part here is simple. You have to hit it on time, because if you don't hit it on time, you'll have your mind and your arm disjointed by the time you need to hit blobs. So, whenever you do this sort of thing, it's important to note that Hopos and Clone Hero are very receptive to taking inputs. So, if you haven't already hit that Hopo, then you're probably going to accidentally strum that Hopo. So, it's very important to hit the second strum of each of these little mini cycles late, which sounds like this. There's that. So, whenever you do this faster, it sounds like this. See what I mean? It's like you're doing the, uh, the chord itself, and then you're pausing your strum while you're letting go of the fret to make sure that the hopo doesn't eat your strum. And then since there's no hopos between the two strums afterwards, you can just do one after the other, making use of the timing window. So, on full speed, it's just this. See what I mean? Uh, if you look back in my FC, like, rewind the video, you'll see me doing that in the actual run itself. Now, if I slow it down a bit further, there's another weird quirk of Clone Hero, where these hopos really like taking your strum inputs. So, to prevent that from happening, you're not going to want to zig these chords. Now, I know that happens unintentionally, so how do you go about not zigging these chords? You take your wrist, you have your wrist parallel to your actual guitar neck, and then roll your fingers over, like this. This makes sure that every input that you do is flat. You're not doing zigs here, you're flatting a chord. So, it looks like this. Right? And now this is of course just my method, right? I'm not saying you have to do this. There are ways of using those hopos and strumming them. I'm pretty sure that's what happened in Borealis' FC. But my personal method is to use every single hopo in the section. So now, let's worry about the blobs of robotic buildup. There are three of them. The first two are the exact same, and they all get faster each time. And I have different mental methods for each of them, because despite them being comprised of the exact same strum and note structure, the way in which your hand is changing anchors is different. So, if we just have this right here, for instance, it's important to note that on this part right here, it is a downslide, right? So, you're having to let go of yellow and press red and blue at the same time. Now, that's different on the third cycle. On the third cycle, you're letting go of green and pressing red and orange, which is a lot easier to do with strum timing. But on these first two, it's not that simple. So, what I personally do, right, is I pay attention to the first helpo, just like I do on every other, you know, of the easy ones. But then, on the... Uh, second, third, and fourth strum, right? I don't pay attention to that second hopo. So what happens is I do an up, down, up strum because I just down strummed on the first chord to hit that and then instantly transition to doing an up, down, 
or a down up strum on the fifth and sixth strum there. So what ends up happening is we're, let me put, put on 5% speed, we're down strumming there, hitting this late so that we do this on an up strum. I mean, I'm going to try that again because practice mode is janky. We're hitting that early, doing this late, and then doing these two together. And then doing this late and triple galloping really fast and then letting go and doing that strum on time. And if you don't want to do that strum on time, you can do the exact same thing that you did with the other ones, like, um, you know, hitting the strum late and doing the next chord early, that sort of thing, putting them together. So on a bit of a faster speed, this method looks like this. You see how the five strums in the middle kind of go together? That is going to give you the best chance of hitting this with Clone Heroes Hopo Reception Engine. At least it was for me. Because every method I tried before this was missing in ways that I didn't really have control over. With this method, it really made me feel like my misses were actually earned. So that I could, you know, rectify and fix what I'm doing wrong. Now, it's very, you know, what's the word for it? Uh... Very important to know that you are not just going to watch this tutorial and go and do it. You're going to have to start on like 40% speed and try to get the strum rhythm down. Because what you're essentially doing is this. And that is very hard to force your mind to do. So ensure that you are very, you know, good with your technical strumming. If you're not, try playing sped up Dragon Force songs to get your mind correct for this sort of thing because you have to have full control over your wrist to be able to do this so let me go to like 60 percent speed to try to do this i did it wrong first strum early five strums in the middle blended together So, if I take off the sections, right, then we have, let me take off the sections, please. And I'm going to put it on 80, er, no, 60% speed to do the whole section. Yeah, I'm still not perfect at the section. Like, I, I'm just consistent enough to FC the song. That's about it. You know, there are other people that are better at this section than I am, but, you know, whatever. I only had four runs up to robotic buildup, and then I FC'd the song, so they can suck my dick. <laughs> Alright, another thing to note is the bottom strums and the hopos is always going to be where your index finger is, where your anchor is. Even the blue one, so you're going to have to go into fourth position for this song. right there now the last cycle there as you noticed is a bit different which I'm going to start on the blue strum here cuz honestly this is the hardest part of the section take it slow put it on like 10% uh, you're moving your index up to there, and then I use my ring, and of course you can do the same thing as that you did before, hitting this late and this early, but on this it's a bit harder, because sliding back an anchor is tougher. Now on this section, it's actually even easier to put those five strums together. So barring this part, which is probably the hardest part of the section, getting to this part right here, You'll have to absolutely pre-anchor the green on this note. So don't try and like uh, slide back at the same time you're strumming here. Definitely hit that red earlier. That way you can hit this note on time. So if I put the section here and then do this. Then you do that. 
It's the same thing as the rest of the section, just a bit faster. And also, it's very important to note, of course, as I mentioned near the beginning, that you have to do these last four notes slower, because that BPM is slowing back down. So then whenever you speed this up, it looks a bit more like this. If I'm not bad at the game. Putting the five strums in the middle together. And doing it later. So let's do full section, see if I can do it. Yeah. I'm still not perfect. But that's the gist of it.